We're in a place where most great inventions start, the garage. What do you get when you mix cornstarch with water? I say you get oobleck, Kevin. Gesundheit, what do you get when you mix cornstarch with water? I said oobleck, Kevin. That is right, right. My favorite non-Newtonian fluid besides blood and ketchup? <laughs> oobleck. A non-Newtonian fluid is any fluid that doesn't behave like water. And by adding two parts cornstarch to one part water to make oobleck, we create just that. Suspension of cornstarch and water, it behaves so interestingly. When all those cornstarch molecules are surrounded by the water, they can slide really, really easily. But as soon as you put a lot of force on them, they lock together mm -hmm. and it almost becomes a solid. It's very, very cool. I think we should test the limits of this oobleck. I think we should really stress it out. You know, I actually know a guy who has kind of an awesome backyard and has done a lot of this stuff in the past. Okay. Want to go check it out? Yes, I do. Let's do it. We're getting help from the backyard scientist, Kevin Kohler, best known for his viral videos using his backyard as his lab. From melting cell phones to exploding just about everything. Nice! Kevin's backyard is the perfect spot for testing out Ublek. Hey, man. What's up? So, uh, we're here to mess around with some Ublek. What do you say? Let's get started. Sweets. We've gathered some of Kevin's friends to help us in our quest. And this is going to require a highly scientific quiver of testing instruments. Our goal with these tools and weapons is to use them on Ublek to find out what kind of forces and stressors make Ublek act like a liquid and which ones make it act like a solid. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming to play with goo. <laughs> so today we're going to subject Ublek to a lot of stress. And so we have some stress-inducing uh, implements here. We have a bow and arrow. Now, these are razor-tipped arrows. Yeah. What will happen if we fire an arrow at a balloon full of oobleck? I mean, it should go straight through, right? Straight through? We'll see. Makes we'll sense. see. Uh, we also have uh, Kevin's golf ball cannon. Uh, Kevin, how fast can this move a golf ball? Like three or 400 feet per second. That's pretty fast. So is a chainsaw going to do a whole lot of damage to Ublik? I think it's going to do a lot of damage. We'll see. Let's we'll hope. see. And then we have all of these uh, slicing and cutting devices over here. Let's get started. First up, master swordsman and trainer Guy Hagen is taking on Ublek using a Japanese sword called a katana. The incredibly sharp weapon dates back to the 1400s. Will the impact of its razor-sharp edge cut the oobleck in half like a solid, or just break the balloon and cause the oobleck to pour out like a liquid? Oh, oh it worked! <laughs> <laughs> right through, it's nice. Oh, it's that so was trippy. awesome. Well, I think we're gonna have to look to the high speed to see what's really happening. Darren is slowing down time to see exactly what happens when the katana strikes the oobleck. Inside the balloon, the oobleck is not under force and therefore in a liquid state. But as the blade makes contact with the oobleck, it becomes a solid. The blow of the sword causes the cornstarch to collect, but as the force dissipates and the oobleck falls to the ground, it reverts back to a liquid state. This is the process of sheer thickening. A hard force slams micro-sized particles in the fluid together, forming long, rigid chains, which are hard to break. Next up, Ublek versus Chainsaw. Ublek versus Chainsaw. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Well, was anybody surprised by that reaction? I thought that would react more like a liquid, but it just seemed solid the whole way. Well, there's a lot of force, and then that balloon did not respond well to the chainsaw. Non-Newtonian fluids like oobleck are now being developed for use in military body armor. As the teeth of the saw cuts into and stresses the oobleck, it turns from a liquid to a protective solid and prevents the saw from breaking through. <laughs> Caught right into it. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah, just like tore right into the uh, wow. into the motor. I hope that wasn't like an heirloom chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can always pass down from one yeah. pawn shop to another. Oh, uh, yeah. Slicing the oobleck with a chainsaw and sword transformed it into a solid. But what if we attack the oobleck with a super slim arrow so all the pressure hits one small point on the balloon? Oobleck versus compound bow and razor tipped arrows. Any predictions? I think it's just gonna go straight through. It's gonna act like a liquid and it's not gonna affect it at all. Anybody else? I think it's just gonna take the arrow and stop it. 
Mm. Grab it and smash it, break it, and then throw it on the ground. I like that idea. All right, let's find out. Ready? Three, two, one. Unlike the broad stroke impact of the chainsaw, which was stopped by the solid oobleck, the high speed and extremely low friction of the arrow allows it to travel easily through the still liquid oobleck. This time it went right through, and we saw the balloon was gone, and that oobleck kind of stayed together, but we saw that kind of pit yeah. in the middle. That was a perfect shot. When the arrow strikes the oobleck, it penetrates cleanly through the liquid form without resistance because the arrow point only impacts a tiny amount of surface area on the oobleck, the force isn't enough to transform the liquid into a solid and stop the arrow. <laughs> now what happens if we broaden the impact on the balloon by firing something bigger at it, like a golf ball? This golf ball cannon is made of a PVC pipe and powered by a small propane tank. Balloon is up, oobleck versus golf ball, asterisk, cannon. Three. Two, one. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. It caught it. That was awesome. I thought it was going to go through, but it caught it. Darren can freeze time and stop the golf ball in flight to see what really happens to the oobleck. So that golf ball was all might, no grace, but it was really, really cool how when it impacted, it created very specific patterns going out from the edges. Because the golf ball strikes the oobleck with a blunt force much wider than that of the arrow tip, the fluid reacts to the extreme stress by solidifying, bringing it to a complete stop. So it, everyone was a little bit different, right? Because we had different types of stress being put onto the oobleck, so it reacted a little bit differently and separated differently. And it just goes to show that, you know, when you put the right amount of force into this particular non-Newtonian fluid, it behaves like a solid. Discovery.